G'day everybody, it's Josh Cohen here, coming to you from the land down under in Melbourne in Australia. How's it going? Welcome to the second tutorial on Radiohead's Daydreaming. This is a little bit of a new angle that I'm trying out on the channel at the moment. Given that I've got a little bit more time on my hands, I was actually meant to be flying out to Berlin last week on a one-way ticket to hit the music scene a little bit harder this year and to play some, some live shows off the back of my songbook. But that's not going to happen. So fortunately for you folks, you get more content coming through the channel and I thought I'd try out some tutorials and see, see how that flies. Firstly, a big thanks to everybody for all the lovely comments and positive messages on the channel. I really appreciate it. I do read all the comments and I try to reply to as many as I possibly can. And also a big thanks to everyone who ended up buying a copy of my songbook after the last tutorial. That was a nice little surprise, so thank you so much. For those of you that don't know, I released my debut band approved songbook Radiohead for solo piano last year through Faber Music in London. You can buy signed and numbered copies off my website at joshcohenmusic.com and I'm happy to personalise the book as well if you wanted me to write a little note in there for you or for somebody else that you know that will appreciate a Radiohead songbook. It's great isolation homework and um, yeah, it's a nice little gift idea. So head to the website if you're keen to buy a copy. I've been working on some new arrangements as well for the channel. Um, there's quite a few that I've got on the go at the moment from David Bowie to Avex Twin and Nick Cave. There's a tool track in there and also Moses Sumney I've been working on. But um, yeah, we'll just see how that goes. I've got a few that are on the, uh, on the burner at the moment. And I've also got quite a bit of original content that I've been working on. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen, I did release an album called Life Drafts a few weeks ago. Um, that's available on Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp and all digital stores as well as on my YouTube channel. Um, the album was actually recorded on my phone as voice memos in my lounge room and it's sort of an insight into my, uh, my creative process. So I just, um, yeah, when I'm writing my tunes, just end up putting the phone next to me and record the ideas and I decided to sort of cut off that creative process and just publish the voice memos as an album. So the track titles actually on that album are exactly the same track titles or names or labels in, in my phone for the voice memos. So um, have a listen to that, that's worthwhile checking out. And I've also got some new content coming out with my band Auto Luna. We're dropping some new tracks from our new debut album through the channel. That'll be coming out in the next few weeks. And um, that's a project that I've been working on for probably over 15 years with some long-term friends. So it's nice to actually finally, finally release it. So yeah, let's get stuck into it. Here we go. Tutorial number two. I'm going to try to teach you folks how to remember 99 notes. What I just played was 99 notes and I'm going to show you how I internalize and remember this kind of content and hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight as to how I approach music. So here we go. So for those of you that um, I'm assuming you've watched the first tutorial, you guys will remember that the beginning of the tutorial started with those three notes on the right hand, D, E and A, um, which is the same three notes from, from the intro. for the So those three notes make an appearance in this riff that we're about to learn today. It's quite interesting how it works because that rhythm and those notes stay exactly the same, just with some other notes spliced in between those notes. So you've got to remember those, those three notes to start off with. We're actually going to end up using a different fingering for this. It'll be our second finger on the D, third finger on E, and our fifth finger on the A. The other sets of notes that you need to remember to get this riff down pat is we're going to start off with these two notes here, C sharp and F sharp. Remember this is middle C, so it's just one note higher and remember that sharps go to the right. So we've got C sharp and F sharp. You then slide these two notes down to C and F. After you've done that, you spread your wings and what I mean by that is the notes go out by a semitone. Um, for those of you that don't know, a semitone is the distance between two notes on the piano, like this. Okay, so C to C sharp is a semitone. C sharp to D is a semitone. D to E flat, that is a semitone. This is a tone, where it's a C to a D is a tone. I've got a note in between, that C sharp is in between. D to E is a tone. E flat to F is a tone. 
I'm skipping out over a note. C sharp to D sharp is a tone. I'm missing out over that D. In America, we call them half steps and whole steps, but because I'm from Australia and we adopt the British terminology, it's semitones and tones for me. So, what happens? We start off with that C sharp and F sharp. They both go down by semitones. And then these two semitones go out to B and F sharp. So I'll do that again. So we start on C sharp, F sharp. We slide down C and F. It then goes out to B and F sharp. From this position here, we're going to inverse the notes. So I've got a white note down here, a black note up here on the right hand, and you flip it around. So you go to the black note down here and the white note in the right hand. Okay, so I'll do that one more time. C sharp, F sharp, slide down to C and F. We spread our wings and go from to B and F sharp. It then flips around visually. So I'm gonna go actually down by a semitone here. I get B flat and F, and then it comes back to C and F, which is the second shape that we did. Okay, so one more time. C sharp, F sharp, you have to try to internalize this pattern goes to C and F, spread your wings, B and F sharp, go down by a semitone, and then bring that B flat up to a C and keep that F the same. So just try learning those sets of notes and try to internalize that before moving on. It won't take long. Okay, so once you've got that down pat, we're gonna move on to playing the actual riff. So here's how it goes. With the fingering, you're going to get your thumb on a C sharp, second finger on D, third finger on E, fourth finger on F sharp, and your fifth finger on an A. Okay, this is the first shape. So you can see in this shape here, I've got the D, E, and A from the introduction, and then we're putting the C sharp and F sharp from those set of notes that we just talked about before. So there you go, there's the chord. From this shape here, as you know, the C sharp and the F sharp they slide down to the white notes, they go down by a semitone. So I'm going to push my hand closer towards myself and play those notes there. C, D, E, F, A. Notice the D, E and A is still there. I've just got the C and the F in there. I'll do that one more time. So C sharp, D, E, F sharp, A. I'm sort of taking note of those two notes there that we were just talking about before. I'm going to slide my hand towards myself and play the C and the F. Keeping all the other notes the same. D, E and A are the same. If you remember, we spread our wings here, so that C and that F are going to span out by semitones. So my thumb is going to drop to the B, my fourth finger is going to ascend to the F sharp. I'm going to play that chord there. Okay, so from the top, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, A, slide down to C and F. We're going to spread our wings, thumb goes to B, fourth finger goes to F sharp. Great. The next shape, remember, the B and the F sharp are going to go down by semitones. They're going to invert. I sort of have a white note here, a black note here. It's going to go black into white. So I'm going to slide my hand closer towards the piano to make that stretch so I can comfortably reach that B flat. And now I've got my thumb on B flat and my fourth finger on F. So from the top, you can see the C sharp, F sharp here. Slide down, we've got C and F. We're going to spread our wings. Thumb goes to B, fourth thing goes to F sharp. Again, notice I've got my D, E, and A still in here. And then my thumb and my fourth finger are going to switch around. I'm going to push my hand further towards the piano and get my thumb onto that B flat, fourth finger onto the F natural. There you go. The reason we call it an F natural is, it, is because it was previously an F sharp. And after this here, it's really easy. That thumb goes to a C natural. And that's the second shape that we started with. All right, one more time from the top. Here we go. So, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, A. Slide down to C and F. Spread your wings, B and F sharp here. Thumb goes to B flat, fourth finger goes down to an F, F natural. Slide up, there you go. And then the thumb comes to a C natural. These are the shapes. Now, as far as learning the riff, the way that it works is the first bar will be this shape here, the second bar will be this shape here, 
The third bar is split up into two. So the third bar is half of this shape and the other half is going to be this shape here. And then the fourth bar is completely that shape there. So the only thing you really need to look out for is on the third bar, first bar, second bar, the third bar is going to take this one here and split it into two and do both of those shapes in the third bar before coming back to the fourth bar, just as that shape there. All right, here's how we learn the riff. So, the way that I like to think about it is this third finger that's on the E, we sort of skip over the E initially when we're learning the first part of the riff. So I'm gonna split up the riff, it's 12 notes in total, and we're gonna split it up into six and six. And the E, you sort of disregard initially. And what I mean by that is when you've got these notes here, for this original shape, we're gonna start on the highest note, on the A, and you go all the way down to the very bottom note and you work your way back up. So you start on the A, go down to the thumb onto the C sharp, second finger on the D, and we're gonna skip out over the E and go up to the F sharp. So it's sort of like going from the top to the very bottom and then just working our way up, but skipping out over the E. So, do it. Skip out over the E, F sharp. Now once you've done those four, first four notes, the way that the first half of this phrase finishes is it goes E down to the C sharp. So you eventually hit that E after you've done those first four notes and you go down to the C sharp. I'll do it again. Okay, so I'm skipping out over that E as I'm working my way back up. Skip over the E, up to the F sharp, and finish on E and C sharp. Okay, that's the first half. The second half, starts at the very top and works its way down, skips out over the E again, and goes all the way to the bottom. So I'm going five, four, two, one, and then you come back to the E, and then you finish on an F sharp. So the first half of the riff ends with E down to C sharp. The second half of the riff ends with E going to F sharp. Okay, so I'll do that second half again. So I'm working my way down, skipping out over the E, then hit the E and finish on F sharp. One more time, working our way down, skipping out over the E, and then we get up to the E and then to the F sharp. Great, so let's do those two back to back. So top note to the bottom note, working our way back up, skip out over the E, up to the F sharp, here's where we go E to C sharp. Second half of the riff, works our way down the notes, and then you finish on E, F sharp. Okay, one more time. Top to bottom, skip out over the E, finish on E, C sharp, work our way down from the top, skipping out over the E, here we go, and then finish on E, F sharp. One more time. Top to bottom, skip out over the E, E, C sharp, Work our way down, skipping out, skipping out over the E. Yeah, now it's time for the E F sharp. One more time. Skipping out over the E on the way down, and finish on E F sharp. Now, practice that. See if you can internalize those 12 notes. If you can internalize those 12 notes, you can do the entire riff, which is really, really handy, okay? So that's really, really important before you move on to this next, next part and the next bar, but just try to internalize that because the finger numbers are gonna stay identical. It's just the notes are changing, okay? So if you can remember this combination of five down to the one, second, fourth finger, three, one, five, four, two, one, three, four. If you can remember those, those numbers, that means you'll be able to play the entire riff, okay? So, that's the shape. Right, we're gonna move on to the next one. Lovely chord there, C, D, E, F, A. Right, same thing. Top to bottom, skip out over the E, then finish on E, C. Okay, I'll do it one more time. Top to bottom, skip out over the E, E, C there. Work our way from the very top, working our way down, skipping out over the E, then three, four. I'll do it again. 
top to the bottom, working our way back up, skipping out over the E, finish on E, C here, go to the very top, work our way down through the notes, and finish on E, F. Okay, I'll do both of those two phrases back to back now. So those 12 notes actually end up repeating. So it's 24 notes per bar. Working our way down, skipping out over the E, E, F sharp. I move my hand closer towards myself so I can comfortably reach these next notes. Same pattern, starting on the A, all white notes here. Skip out over the E. Work our way down through the notes, skipping out over the E on the way down and finish on E, F. There it is. Do it one more time. It does do the pattern twice for each bar. Working our way down through the notes. Lovely. All right, next chord. Remember, from this shape here, our thumb and fourth finger are gonna spread out. You're gonna spread your wings here. So thumb goes down to a B, fourth finger goes up to the F sharp. Okay, gives us a bit of a B minus seven at 11 chord. Mmm, delicious. All right, so same pattern. Now remember, the only difference in this bar here, because we're up to bar number three, is we don't go through this riff twice. We only go through it once. So you're only going to do 12 notes before we move on to the next chord. All right, same pattern. Top to bottom, skip out over the E, finish on third to the one, so E to B there, working our way down through the notes, E, F sharp, do it again, okay? So that only does it once, that's how we do it in the third bar. I'm just gonna repeat it again, just so you guys can see it. Okay, top to bottom, skipping out over the E, E, B there to finish off with, working our way down through the notes, skip out over the E, and finish on E, F sharp. Okay, from here, remember, these two notes here, invert, so the white note to the black note, Go to black note to a white note. If I slide my hand closer towards the piano, check out that chord. B flat major seven, sharp 11. Mm, so tasty. All right, here we go. Same pattern. Top to bottom. Skip out over the E. Third finger to the th thumb. Working our way down through the notes. Okay, exactly the same fingers. Top to bottom, skipping out over those, the E, E to B flat there, then work our way down through the notes, skipping out over the E, and then finish on the E, F. Alrighty, let's go from the very beginning. Okay, I'll do it slightly faster. That's the first time through, one more time. spread our wings so thumb you're going to go from the C to F to the B to the F sharp I'm going to do this riff once top to bottom working our way down through the notes slide our hand up to reach this chord here B flat and F top to bottom working our way down through the notes Exactly the same finger numbers. And remember the final bar, your thumb, which was resting on a B flat before, just goes up to a C and that's the second shape that we had and does the exact same bar as the second bar. Working our way down, skipping out over the E and it does it twice. Working our way down through the notes, skip out over the E. Cool, that's the riff. Nice one. Left hand, 
For this part of the track, it's going to be an A, an E, and an A. This is middle C, so it's two notes below middle C down to that A, an octave below, and then you're going to include the fifth note of the chord or the scale in this, in this shape down here as well. Okay? This is the exact same shape that we used in the first part of the tutorial. All right, I'm going to go from the very beginning. I'm going to use a bit of sustain pedal, so that's the right pedal on the piano, just to sort of um, make it sound a little bit more washy and um, also. Yeah, I'm going to actually hold the pedal down the entire time just to sort of get that same, the same effect from the original track. Right, I'm going to do it nice and slow and we'll speed it up. A little bit faster now. Cool, I'll try to do it at tempo, which means at the original speed now. Nice one. All right, if you can achieve that, you're doing really well. That's, there are 99 notes in there, so that's your homework. Additional homework for those of you playing at home, which should be everybody, is to try to incorporate a little bit of left hand, and it's just the dexterity or the coordination of trying to get some left hand involved with this right hand line. So, Basically the way that it works is your left hand. We're going to be doing an A octave, so an A and an A. Nice curved fingers. Uh, I'm not going to get too flat with, those, with the technique there. And where it gets a little bit tricky is you need to be playing that A octave in your left hand every three notes in the right hand. Alright, so I'll go through it real slow and we'll just see how we go with that. Okay, so I'm going to be playing an A every three notes in my right hand okay so one way of thinking about it will be like this so i bring my left hand in here on this f sharp okay i'm going to do that one more time so top to bottom bring this left hand in here that's the fourth note okay when you come back to the beginning or the second half of the riff, you're going to hit the left hand again, working your way down, and then bring it in here on. Oh, I missed it, it's on the C sharp. Try it again. There's the left hand. Bring the left hand in here again, and on the C sharp, you're going to bring in the left hand again. Okay, I'll do it one more time. So, top to bottom. First time we hit this F sharp, there it is. Bring it again, A's everywhere, work your way down, and on this C sharp, bring that left hand in again. 
Okay, try it one more time, a little bit faster. All right, that's some additional homework. If you can get that coordination of your left hand playing every three notes in the right hand, that will help us out significantly. Um, the next level up, I'll just quickly graze over this as well, just to give you a little bit of a heads up how this first part of works. Um, it's like this. One other thing that I was just thinking of, that it, it's interesting, it, it hits the A every time you start the, start the riff, or do the first six notes, it always comes back with that left hand. The first time, it ends up hitting the F sharp, and the second time it ends up hitting the C sharp. So if you recall those shapes that we were talking about at the very beginning of this tutorial, it actually, the left hand comes in on the top, top note of those two notes, and then it comes in on the, on the bottom note every time. Just an interesting observation. All right, here we go. The left hand does change a little bit. See if you can follow it. Stays on A there in the left hand. I'll just explain that one. So it's the same thing, we'll do it slowly. Hitting the F there, together, getting the C. Together, A's all around, we hit the bottom note now together. Okay, for the next one, it stays on the A again. To this chord here, that our lovely B flat major seven sharp eleven chord, mm, you end up hitting a B flat octave. Now you have to move out of the way for this one. End up hitting B flat with either either thumb. It doesn't make a difference. And on the last bar, it's a low F. Do that a little bit faster now. Here we go. time at tempo. Here we go. Nice one. Alrighty, so that's how you do this little riff. It's an important part of the tune. It probably takes up about two thirds of the tune. So if you can learn how to do that, you're well on your way to, to finishing off this track. We're gonna hit the uh, verse in the next tutorial. I might potentially finish off, this riff does come back at a later point in time. I'm not sure when we'll introduce that, but um, yeah, we're slowly working our way through this tutorial. And um, yeah, please uh, send through some feedback. If you've got any comments or suggestions or any uh, tracks you'd like me to cover or do some arrangements for, please comment them below on the channel. And yeah, really appreciate your support. Hope you guys are doing well out there. And um, yeah, getting through isolation. We're almost through it, um, at least here in Australia. But um, yeah, I'm thinking about all you guys around the world in America and Europe. And yeah, hope everyone's doing okay. So yeah, adios from Melbourne and um, see you guys next time. Nice one, thanks, bye.